Hello and welcome. Today I'm talking about the classic fly lady plan. As you know, I teach my version of the classic fly lady plan. I was a fly lady mentor uh, with Marla Silly, the original fly lady, and now I'm on my own and I teach my version of the classic fly lady plan. So let's go over that plan. Remember, this is a method. It is not something you just blast through and then do it one time and it's over. It's something that happens daily. We have three parts to the Fly Lady Plan. I call it the three-layer cake because it's sweet. It works great for you. The first layer is your routines, which I now call rituals, because they're so important to you and to your being centered and to keeping your house in good shape. The rituals. That would be the morning ritual, the um, after-dinner ritual, the before-bed ritual, number one, the before-bed ritual, number two, and um, I always throw the laundry in as part of the ritual. And also I created clutter stops. So we don't do hot spot fire drills. We do clutter stops. We want to stop the clutter in our lives. And the um, details of the morning routine are that you get up in the morning, you go into the bathroom, you wash your face, brush your teeth, moisturize your skin. If you're going to wear makeup, put it on now, comb your hair, put your clothes on, Put your pajamas away. If it's a day that you take a shower in the morning, maybe you take showers in the morning, then take your shower and, and put that in this process. It's about, um, when we finish the whole morning routine, about a 20, 25 minute routine. If you've added a shower, I would add another 10 minutes to it. So about a half hour if you're taking a quick shower. I realize there are caveats. If you have curly hair and you have to wash it every day or you wash it every other day or you scrunch it every day, having curly hair myself, I realize that is a time zapper. So plan that in your morning routine. Um, we're also going to make our bed. We're going to empty the dishwasher. I put a, pot of, a cup of coffee on. I use a little Keurig, but you might do a pot of coffee. You might have a cup of tea. You might not drink anything but water. It's okay. And then put a load of laundry in. Now, this is the typical routine for everyone, whether you work outside the home or in the home. Some of you may choose not to do laundry in the morning. In Florida, I definitely would not do that. My clothes would not be um, the freshest when I came home to put them in the dryer. But some of you have timers on your washing machines. Take advantage of that. Have your machine run right before you come home so that when you come home, you can put the clothes in the dryer. All right? So we have three parts to laundry. You have to wash it. Then you have to put it in the dryer. Then you have to fold it or hang it up and put it away. That is completing the laundry. It's three steps. All right. Clutter stops happen three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, especially if you have children. Um, we want to look around in the morning to see if anything is out of place. Mostly you should look around and say, hmm, looks pretty good, right? Because you just did a clutter stop before you went to bed. Unless you have some little mouse that gets up in the middle of the night, it should look pretty good. If they didn't leave anything, it should look even better, even if you have a mouse. So, um, and by a mouse, I mean a person. <laughs> All right, and so then we have our clutter stop at around noon where we look around and we say, hey, pick your shoes up. Nope, don't leave that paper there. And you can do that along the day. But if you're just clutter blind, especially then look and say, oh, look, mom left her shoes and her purse out here. That wasn't right, was it? No, what did you leave? Let's put this up, right? That's little children. You have to use different um, different ways to talk to a children as they age. But in general, even your husband, you can say, hey, bud, you know, I left my purse here and I see that you left your napkin there. Can you get that while I get my purse? Thanks. You know, whatever. And then um, some of the husbands that you have are not so cooperative. They are totally clutter, clutter blind and think it's stupid to do a clutter stop. And if that's the case with you, that is the person you married. You love them. Don't don't climb that hill. Don't fight on that hill. Pick up their napkin and put it in the garbage without a huff, without a puff. Be on the lazy river. Be calm, okay? All right, next is, so we've done laundry, we've done clutter stops, we've done the morning routine. If someone was in the bed when you got up, you can't make it, but go back and make it later, okay? Not too much later. Having a nice made bed makes all the difference in, when, in how you feel each time you walk in that room or walk past that room. Encourage your children to make their beds. All right, that's the morning routine. The after dinner routine, 
involves whomever ate with you. So let's say you cooked the dinner. You're going to have some things that you have to do after dinner as the cook. You're going to clean your pots and pans. You're going to clean your utensils. You're going to clean your cooking surfaces and you're going to clean your, your um, preparation surfaces. That's your job as the cook. I know that some of you have your spouse cooking and you clean. If that's your agreement and you're happy with it, fine. What I have noticed is when someone cooks, they're not as careful if they don't have to clean up. I think it's a great idea that the cook cleans up after themselves. The other parts of the family will be due. Everyone is putting their own dish in the empty dishwasher. There should be room because you emptied it in the morning. You just have little dishes in there for lunch and breakfast. So now you can put your dinner dishes in there each person, and then someone wipes the table, someone sweeps the floor, and someone wipes the rest of the counters. Super simple. Doing the after dinner routine is about a 15 minute process. Don't let that linger. And then you have to go in there at the end of the day and do the whole thing by yourself when you're exhausted or worse yet, you just leave it. And you, and you have to look at that in the morning. How depressing. Okay. There's nothing sweeter than looking in your kitchen in the morning and it says, ta-da, because it's clean. The sink is shiny. It's empty. The counters are clean. The dishes have been run. You're ready for the day. All right. That's the morning routine, the after dinner routine. The before bed routine has two parts. One happens sometime after dinner, depending on when you have to get your children ready for bed or how small they are. Um, but you have to go and get yourself ready for bed. So if you take your shower or your bath at night, add that time in. Uh, again, 10 minutes for a quick shower, a quick bath, okay? And then, we, but basically what we're going to do is take off our makeup. And if you're not wearing makeup, take off the day. It's important that you wash your face, moisturize your skin, put on your pajamas, lay out your clothes for tomorrow so that you're ready in the morning. You don't have to make a decision in the morning. There's something lovely about having your clothes laid out for you. You know, I lay out my clothes every day. This little top, some white capris, some white sandals. That's what I laid out for today. And I think it's cute. But if I had to go in there and pick out the exact same outfit this morning, I would have looked through my pants and said, oh, I guess I'll wear these today. And I would have looked through my shirts and said, that'll be okay with it. And then I'll put these white sandals on. And, and it's less than satisfying. But when it's laid out for you, it feels so much nicer. I even put my little white pearls on, right? My little white pearl bracelet. So... Take time to take care of yourself with these little rituals. And then the final before bed routine, or I call it before bed routine two, is right before you go to bed, make sure you put soap in the dishwasher and turn it on and brush and floss your teeth and go to bed on time. Now, I realize you will have other things that you do. For me personally, every morning after I do my morning routine, I have breakfast. Um, I have it on my back porch while I say my prayers. And then I talk to my sister, Marty. I do that every single day. And then I start my work. But you might walk the dog or run or do some form of exercise or um, whatever, you know, whatever you do, add that to your morning routine. But it's not the morning routine. It's in addition to. And in my own planner, I put, and I use Kimmy's planner, the daily planner for, um, I, I do the semester planner. So this morning, a.m., breakfast, prayers, Marty, okay? Actually, this is um, yesterday, but it, it, serves, it serves its purpose. So, and I check off, that's laundry. I put the laundry in, I put it in the dryer. Down here, I, I folded it and put it away. C is a clutter stop. That's how I use that. So I want you to really track what you're doing. It's going to make a huge difference. All right, that's the routines. Then we've got the um, the second layer of our cake, which is zones. Zones are a way you lay out your home so that you're only working in one portion of the home per week instead of trying to take care of the whole house at one time. That's very overwhelming. So when you have clutter in your home and not a clutter-free home, then you're going to be working on getting rid of the clutter by working in your zone four times that week for about 15 minutes. That does not include set up and take down. Okay. So set up for clutter is you have to have a bag, a box, and a basket. I just use the laundry basket, just an old paper box and a garbage bag. You go into the area you want to declutter and you decide what you need, what you love, need, want, and are going to keep and use. Okay. If you don't, 
love, need, want, keep, and I mean, and use them, then perhaps you don't need them or they need to be put away for a season. Maybe it's something you use at Christmas and it's still sitting out. So that would be put away and you would put it in your laundry basket. Or if it was something that you love, need, and use, and it doesn't belong in this space, but it does happen every day, you use it regularly, put it in your basket. And at the end of your decluttering, take it to that place and put it away. Um, if it is something you don't need, love, want, and or use regularly, but it's still good, then put it in your giveaway box. And then finally, if there's trash in there, something's broken, something you've been promising yourself you would fix for four years is still not fixed, put it in the garbage. Okay. Now, if it's a beautiful clock and it needs to go to the antique store to be fixed, then save the money and put that in a special container to get it fixed if you want it or give it away if you think somebody else could repair it. But you know what I'm saying. It's like you're going through your closet and there's a torn blouse in there and you just really know it's beyond repair and you're not a good seamstress anyway and you certainly wouldn't buy that yourself in the Goodwill. Let's put it in the gibble, in the garbage. And at the end of your 15 minutes of actually staying in one spot and working, you're going to take your bag to the garbage can outside so no one can look in it and say, oh no, you didn't throw this away. And the box is going to go in the back of your car with something over it so nobody's going to look in it so that next time you're running errands, you can drop it off at the Goodwill or wherever you decide to take it. And then finally, the put away basket. You're going to go through your house putting things away. So you don't zoom back and forth while you're decluttering. You're wasting time. Stay there and then at the end, put things away. Okay, so you could spend as much as 20 to 30 minutes total in your zone, including completing the process. All right, so zone work is in five zones. The zone is zone one, the entryway. That's all the entryways into and out of your home and their surrounding areas. Zone two is the kitchen. That could include an eating kitchen, or you might want to include your dining room if you use it regularly. Then zone three is other rooms like guest rooms, children's rooms, hall bathroom, laundry room, office, craft room, garage. You can come up with your other room or rooms. Zone four is your main bedroom, the one you sleep in with your bathroom if you have one and your closet. And zone five is all the living areas and the places where you watch TV and hang out with the family, okay? So that's your zones. You, you, and if that doesn't work for you, you split it up in five zones, however it does work for you, and then you work your zone, just like I explained. Now, once the clutter is gone, and by the way, that little clutter stop um, ritual that I talked about earlier, well, that gets applied to a place you've just recently decluttered because that is a habit for you and your family to leave things on the dining table or where to, wherever it is you just decluttered or throw things in your closet or stick things in the console or whatever. So you've just decluttered it. It's not nice and decluttered. You're going to look at it every day, two or three times a day to make sure nothing has been put in or on that piece of furniture or that area that doesn't belong there. You want to keep it the way. It's like planting a flag on the moon. This is mine. Nobody's going to mess this up anymore. And don't be mean. Be firm but kind. And be firm and kind with yourself as well. Don't be shameful. Don't be ashamed if you see that you are the culprit. Just learn from that and keep putting it away. Keep putting it in the place it belongs. And if that thing like your keys or your purse doesn't have a home, come up with two homes for it. Maybe one in the closet and one on the dining chair. I mean, if that's where you really want it to stay. It doesn't matter. You pick a spot, okay? All right, so that's zones. Once the zones are decluttered, you can start deep cleaning in that area. So that's when you're not just doing a weekly home blessing. You're actually giving it a good vacuum for the whole 15 minutes. And you've got four units to work in that area that week, okay? Vacuuming, mopping, dusting, polishing, doing the deep cleaning, cleaning the baseboards, something different every time. It's okay. It's the dripping of water that wears away stone. Before you know it, your little house is going to be singing and wrapping its arms around you and welcoming you every time you come in. Now we're going to talk about the basic weekly plan, which is the third layer of the three layer cake. So we've talked about the rituals and the zones, basic weekly plan. The basic weekly plan consists of um, weekly home blessing hour on Monday. This is typical for an at-home homemaker. If you're a payroll homemaker, you would do your weekly home blessing hour on Saturday if you have a classic schedule. It's one hour, it's six room, I mean, it's six steps, 
Each step is 10 minutes. The steps are strip the bed, wash the sheets, and put the sheets back on. Well, of course, that's not going to be 10 minutes on the clock. You've got to pull the sheets off, which take a couple of minutes, put them in the washer for a minute. When they're done, put them in the dryer for another minute. I'm talking about the minute to put it in the dryer. When they're done, take them back to the bedroom, put them back on the bed for a couple of minutes, about 10 minutes total. All right, so that's that's sheets. We're going to clean the mirror in the bathroom of spots or any spots in the house. So you just take a damp microfiber cloth and you wipe off the little spots. You don't do the whole mirror. You just do the little spots and the spot by the door. Maybe you've got one of those little windows by the door where the dog mashes his nose, or maybe you've got a glass table and there's some fingerprints on that. You're just going to get the little spots. 10 minutes, just go through your house. Boom. Then we're going to empty all the little garbage cans. I'm talking about the one in your bathroom. Maybe you have one in your bedroom. Maybe you have one in your office. Empty those, put a new liner in. You're done. Maybe less than 10 minutes. And then we're going to, um, so we've done the sheets. Oh, we're going to dust. Okay. I highly recommend that you have a feather duster, an excellent quality feather duster. You can get one from Fly Lady at flylady.net slash tools. Just look for the feather duster. You don't have to buy the little packages. Right now, while I'm recording this, they're currently out. They don't have any, but they're getting more in. They always run out. They always get more in. They're, to me, the best tool for dusting because if something's sitting on a dresser, you don't have to move it and dust. You can just, the little fingers of the of the thing will just go around it and dust. If you take a Swiffer, you can knock it over. So you have to move everything in Swiffer. This is quicker and you can get things up high and you can get like little tops of things and it's just much, much easier. So keep an eye out for that and get that ordered. About 10 minutes to do that. So I'd pick five rooms and I'd hit each room for about two minutes. And then we've got the... Um, floors. So there's two parts to the floors. There is the vacuuming, the main part of the house. So that would, I would pick five rooms, like your master bedroom, your living room, dining room combination, uh, maybe one of the children's room or your guest room, a hallway, and one other place. Oh, your master bedroom, if I didn't say that. Anyway, pick five rooms. That's usually what I did. And I, when I had my two-story house with lots of rooms, I'm in a smaller apartment now. So, And I have a Roomba who does it for me. And you can also have that and eliminate a step. Actually, I have a Eufy, which is less expensive, but I still love it. And it works great. And I've had it for several years. Um, but just hit it really quick. So if you have a big, bulky, heavy machine, that's not what you want. We're not deep cleaning. Get something like a little Bissell stick broom, you know, a little easy thing. And you're going to just hit two minutes for each room. And when your time is up, your time is up. Pencils down, go to the next room because you want to get this done in 10 minutes. I promise you it will look better. So that's vacuuming. Kind of just get the traffic patterns if you have carpet. If you don't have carpet uh, along the edges is a lot of times where the dust and the dog hair rolls. Oh, an, an addendum to, or an insert to, if you have dogs that shed a lot, then that is not what I'm talking about here. This is for the family. If you have dogs that shed a lot, then your commitment is to clean up after those dogs daily and run your vacuum cleaner daily. So remember that, or get a room before pets and run it daily. And that will make your the rest of your cleaning easier. And then finally, we're going to mop. We're going to mop the kitchen and the bathroom. Spend three minutes in the kitchen, two minutes in the bathroom. I use a dirt devil, squeeze the button, it squirts out the water, and the Mrs. Myers, which is a particular cleanser cleaner I like that I put a capful in, and it's got a, a removable washable pad, and it's perfect for the kind of cleaning we're doing. Okay, you can find those things on YouTube. I mean, on Amazon. I do not have an Amazon link and I don't care, <laughs> but I'm happy to tell you what I use. Okay. Um, and that's it. When you're done, you're done. You're going to put everything away. So take the head off of the mop, you know, not the head, but the mic, the, the a pad off the mop and let it dry so you can wash it and put it back when you're done. Um, empty the vacuum cleaner, put your tools away and it's going to look so much better. You're going to have clean sheets and everything's going to look better. Okay, and then that's number one of the week of the basic weekly plan on Mondays or on Saturday morning. And you can split that with your family. Three of those jobs I call baby jobs, and that's emptying the little garbage cans, wiping the glass, and dusting. So a child could do that. If you have a bad back, maybe you can delegate mopping and vacuuming to an older, stronger child or your husband. That would be nice. 
Um, all right, and then we've got um, on Tuesday during the week for a classic plan is a free day. So if you're an at-home homemaker, you don't do basic weekly plan or zone work that day. You still do your rituals, but you don't do basic weekly plan or zone. So you take that day and you do something for yourself. You do your nails. You um, get your hair cut. You read that book. You lay in the hammock. You do something. I know it's impossible with little tiny kids, but this time it's not going to be the, this way forever. Nothing stays the same. Find some time for yourself, no matter if it's just 15 minutes in your room, three or four times that day. You know, make your room your little aisle of respite. Okay? All right. Next is to take a bubble bath. You know, do something for you. Next, give yourself a facial. I keep thinking of things to tell you, <laughs> but do something for yourself. It's going to make you feel better and less like a martyr and more like somebody who is beloved in the family. Okay, finally, we're going to do Wednesday, which is planning and desk day. Planning and desk day is entailed. It's longer. So on planning and desk day, I take my planner and I plan out my week at a glance. And from the week at a glance, so I go to the month at a glance first, the month at a glance, and then that feeds my week at a glance. So I take the, the appointments that are on my month at a glance calendar and put it on my week at a glance. And then once my week at a glance is filled in, I'm going to fill out my day at a glance. So the week at a glance, this is in Kimmy's, she's in her apron planner, which you can find in the link below. It'll be linked in this video. Um, I highly recommend the quarterly, or the, it's called a semester. It's four, it's four months. So this current one is May, June, July, and August. If you order it now, you'll get it in a week and a half or so. And um, you'll be able to use it every day. And it is not cheap, but it is yummy. It is packed with stuff. So when you're doing your weekly home, I mean, you're doing your planning and desk day, and you're doing your planning after you've done your week at a glance, then you're going to go to your days at a glance and you're going to fill those out. And then you, when you use your day at a glance, it's going to be so awesome because everything you need to do, your next step is right there all day long. You don't have to go looking back and forth for things. And you don't also have to pr pressure yourself by seeing over and over again that you have a big thing coming up. That's okay. That's another day. This is today. Okay. Um, this also has the budget, which is part of planning and desk day. So I have a budget. It's all planned out in my, in my planner. It tells me, you know, my income, my savings, my fixed expenses, my discretionary expenses, if I have any debts that I need to pay off. And then there's little areas where you have sections that say, how much are you going to earn minus each of these areas, expected expenses, how much are you going to have left? And it really helps you budget. So highly, highly, um, highly recommend that. The next thing this planner has in it, which is part of planning and desk day, is your um, freezer information. So your freezer storage. I don't keep master freezer inventory because it's just Larry and I. We just have a refrigerator freezer just for the two of us. But if you have a big deep freeze or a walk, you know, a stand-up freezer or you've got several or you've got a refrigerator in the garage with a freezer, then I would start using this. But this actually feeds, so if you have that, feeds your plan when you're doing your planning, your shop your shelves page. Now I do fill this out. And it has a freezer inventory, a pantry inventory, freezer meals, fridge inventory, and use it as you see fit. I don't use the fridge inventory because I don't have a need for that. I know what's in there. It's just he and I. But if I had my family, my little girls back, I would be doing a fridge inventory as well as a pantry inventory. Okay, so you've got a place where you can meal plan in here, which is part of your planning and desk day. Because planning and desk day is food which would entail inventory, your food inventory, cleaning out your fridge a little bit, not deep cleaning, just giving it a little wipe, organizing it, throwing out the things that have expired, and making a menu for the week. And so here's what the menu area looks like. This is the one I filled out for this week. It's on the week at a glance, and there's the menu. That's what I'm going to be eating all week. And I feed that into my daily because there's a place for your menu on your daily menu. See? Okay, so that's why I love this planner. So you've got food, finance, inbox, and planning. Inbox is the only thing I haven't mentioned. 
inbox is mail that comes in, physical or on your phone uh, in your, or on your computer. So you're going to check your emails and start cleaning them up because you may have thousands of emails and how will you ever know if something's important in there or not? You could never find it. So what I want you to do is start cleaning that up, oldest groups first, and just eliminate whole groups. Create some inboxes if you have some things that you want to keep and park them over there and check those from time to time to make sure those things are still valid and still good for you to keep. And then once you get to a certain point every day when you get mail, you check it and you delete stuff and you unsubscribe from things and you report things to spam. And I still do that every day. And I still get uh, emails and texts, not texts, emails every day and messages. I get messages too. So I'm going to delete those and clean those up and report things and then subscribe from, from things so that I know what I'm getting and I expect what I'm getting. And it's not some advertisement or some weird thing that I don't want to know about or even hear about. Those can be deleted. Um, your inbox also is your actual physical mail. So when you get mail, most of it is garbage, honestly. So when you're going through it, open it, see if it's garbage. If it's garbage, what do you do with it? What? Do you put it in a box? No. Do you save it for later? No. You throw it in the garbage. It's garbage, never to be seen again. Throw it away. I did find my dentist from a flyer in my mailbox, however, because on the day that my dentist's office said, we no longer take your insurance, a flyer came in. It was exactly what I was looking for. I liked what I read. I went online and checked them out. I called them. I liked them. I made an appointment with them. Unless you're looking for somebody to clean your carpets, don't keep the carpet cleaning flyer. Get rid of it, okay? You will get another one. Get rid of those things. All right, so next is um, is things like insurance statements, where insurance companies say, oh, here's how much we paid, and here's how much you paid, and you know, and, and, and you think you've got to keep that. Oh, this is important. No, it's not important. If you know you paid the right amount, and they paid the right amount, and that looks good to you, throw it away. That is my personal opinion. I would never keep that stuff. It just makes you clock, clogged up. In your, in your files. You, if you ever, ever need something like that, you can always call your insurance company and say, hey, can I get a copy of that? I got rid of that. I'm sorry. But you're not, I can't even imagine a scenario where you would, where you would, but maybe you know of one. Um, so things like that, make sure you're throwing things away. And the things that are going to go in your inbox are real things like a bill, or you need to contact your dentist office, or there's a question about um, your credit card and you need to put it in your planner. Call the dentist call the dentist. You need to uh, call the light company. You need to, um, look here, here's where I had it. Call the dentist. It was in my inbox. And go see the new dentist and set a new appointment. That was in there. So once you've done that, guess what? You don't need to keep whatever it is. If it's not a bill, if it's a bill, you need to pay it. And once a week, that's when you take care of it. I hope that was helpful. So that's Food, finance, inbox, and planner, okay? That takes some time. In the beginning, it could take you three or four hours to do that. So you're going to need some quiet time, or you're going to need to split it up over the day, okay? Once you get good at it, it won't take you that long. It'll still take some time, though. You need a quiet day for that. So that's um, planning and desk day. And then finally, we have errand day, where we go and pick up our groceries or go in the grocery store and shop for them or have them delivered or whatever your choice is. And other things like get the car washed, go by the um, the library, go by the post office, go to Costco, whatever it is, drop something off at the Goodwill. That would be on your errand day. And then Friday is car and purse day where you clean out your car. Now, if you're having your car washed on Thursday and you vacuumed it, there's probably not anything in your car. If you, if you started out with a dirty car and you got rid of all the trash, the only thing you would have left when you came home was some empty sippy cups, etc., that you took in. But maybe you're not getting your car washed every week, maybe every month. So while the weeks are, are adding up each day, actually, look in your car and say, what do I need to get out of here? What have the children left and how can I overcome that? I recommend a little bag for each child, a little sturdy bag that their things can go in, their book, their game, their sippy cup, their goldfish crackers, whatever. And so when they get ready to get out of the car, everything goes back in. If they fall asleep, you can throw everything in the bag, throw it over your arm, pick up your child and go in the house. 
Okay. Keep your house, your house, keep your car presentable. And then purse, empty your purse out, put everything back in where it goes, throw the trash away. You'll notice you have receipts that you do not need. Why are you taking those? I just say, no, thank you. I don't want a receipt because I know it's going to be on my credit card because I use my credit card and then pay it off every week. Okay. Maybe that's not your plan and that's okay, but get rid of the things you don't need. All right, boy, this is a long video, but guess what? This is something I wanted to re refresh you with. You need to know what we're doing. If you are payroll, you're doing weekly home blessing hour and zone on Saturday. That's two hours in the morning. At some point, you're going to do planning and desk day. A lot of the people who work will do that on Sunday afternoons. Um, and then we've got um, errand day. Maybe you run your errand day on Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon or on your way home from work one day. Um, maybe you order them and pick them up on your way home from work, or you have your husband do it. It doesn't require any skill. You park and they put it in the trunk. They say, we're going to replace this for this. Is that okay? You say yes or no, and you sign the form and you're gone, right? Okay. Um, let's see. That was car and purse day. Oh, car and purse. That's the only thing we didn't talk about. So for payroll, when I worked outside the home and corporate, I would do my car in the driveway. I would just take a, just a few minutes on a weekday and my purse, I would actually do at my desk on my break. I would just, I wouldn't dump it out. I would just sit at my desk and go through it and throw the trash away and reorganize it. All right. That's it. I hope this was good for you. I hope this was helpful and I hope that you do this while you are also being elegant, enjoying each step, doing the next thing, being calm and peaceful and always remember to be beautiful because you are beautiful.